Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to, uh, to my talk. And so I'm Koichi Suzuki from EDB and used to be in part of the MVP uh, several years ago. So uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, the possibility of the parallel recovery in the Postgres. Uh, in Postgres. And so uh, I'd like to tell, uh, talk about uh, the basics about the recovery and also uh, how recovery can be done in parallel and what kind of, uh, say, additional uh, conditions we need to think about uh, this thing and also the implementation architectures, current achievement and remaining works. And please note that uh, this is not still, uh, this is not yet yeah, part of the Postgres, so this is just uh, uh, research work of my, of my own. But uh, if any of you are interested in to work with me, uh, it's more than welcome, so please, yeah. So please do not think this as a, a very boring thing, but uh, recovery has uh, ha ha happens in this way. You know, uh, we have a database and the database has a da a da data files, but uh, uh, we don't write to the data files directly. Instead, before writing to the data, uh, data, uh, data file, we write all these activities to the wall. It is called wall because it is, uh, it, because it is right ahead log. So it has been written before any data is rushed back to the data file. So what happens is, um, so we copy this data file as a backup or uh, as a long shipping standby. And also we archive or hold this whole wall. And then um, recovery happens to, uh, to apply this wall back to the data. Okay, so this is a very simple picture. And at present, we are doing this in a strictly serious manner. I mean that the wall can be done, while the wall can be done by multiple backends in parallel. And it is serialized here. And then at the recovery, we have to reply uh, the wall, which is uh, essentially written in a parallel manner, in a, seri in a strictly serialized manner, because it is the safe, simple, and the safest manner. So we are doing we are doing this um, until we have the uh, we have a uh, possibly have a recovery. So I think it is maybe more than twenty years or more. And to do this, um, so wall has several architectures or several uh, structures. So each wall is divided into some of the resource manager. It means that um, each type of the write, write to the data file uh, is divided into a resource, manner, a resource manager, such like a heap, it's a data file, re, a data file write. And the transaction and the bean, B3, gin, and hash, all these has the different resource manager, and also each wall has a tag to identify which resource manager it is say uh, responsible to. And each resource manager provides its redo function. So uh, so in the so in the in the recovery, it is very simple that recovery program has to identify which resource manager is uh, is resource is possible for the recovery, and then call this function. So it is quite abstracted manner, and uh, it is done in uh, startup xlog function in xlog.c. Uh, now uh, it is until. Um, until version 14 and uh, in version 15, we also have another file called recovery.c. And anyway, the recovery uh, itself is done by dedicated startup process at present. So it is not a uh, usual backend process. And also startup xlon has to um, do many other things such like 
uh, determine if the post master can begin to access the connection uh, as a hot standby. And also, um, when running in a, uh, in a standby, uh, the startup backlog has to feed back, commit, or abort back to the primary to, uh, for, the, for the synchronous replication. And also has to handle the recovery target. And there are many more. And this is the list of the resource manager ID at present. Yeah, uh, so many. Uh, and as of uh, version 14 and version 15, yeah. Maybe we need to add some in 60, I, I hope not. But anyway, anyway, uh, because these are very well uh, abstracted. So, uh, so if we have new um, resource manager, uh, there will be no significant change in the in the recovery code as well, at, well, uh, at all. Then, how the wall is stored? Okay, here, the left hand side. It is the very start point. Uh, uh, it is the very beginning status of when the database is uh, created by init db okay then so i'll start up here, here and then written in the wall in the uh, written in the uh, wall segment file uh, by default it is 16 megabytes in size and goes to grow but uh, uh, but when we run the checkpoint and also when uh, all these, uh, all walls are consumed by uh, uh, other replications, uh, we can remove them. But anyway, so position of the wall is the distance from the very beginning to the current point. So this is called LSM, and so this size is 64 bit. So it is, uh, it is enough for, maybe enough for the whole lifetime of the database. Then, what is the motiv motivation of the parallelism in the recovery? Um, we all know that the recovery takes very long. For example, if the database size is very huge, uh, and also the backup was taken maybe two, three days ago, when everything flashes, we have to recover everything from the backup and all the walls taken in that period, okay? So if the, if the database is very, very right heavy, um, if, the, if, the, if the backup is two days old, then recovery will take more than two days because wall is written in serialized man uh, in a parallel manner, but uh, has to replay in a serialized, uh, in a serialized manner. So it takes, it can take uh, much longer than it has written. So we so I'd like to improve this, and uh, I found so many DBAs are reluctant to uh, recover from the backup because it takes very very long. And also this will uh, save or uh, save or improve the lag. Uh, in the replaying, in the uh, long shipping uh, replication. And uh, the, the starting idea is um, we can replay the wall record for each database page, uh, for different database page in parallel. But there are many challenges. It, this is just an example, and I will mention a, a bit more about that later. There are many constraints we must follow during the wall replay. For example, when we replay the commit, about, or uh, prepare, or record, all the, all the wall record which belongs to such transaction must have to be replayed 
So, uh, so we need we need some say uh, some synchronization method between the workers uh, to fulfill uh, this one. And also, um, the other thing thing uh, thing is some log records. It's heap two has replay information for multiple pages. So we cannot uh, simply assign these to several several independent workers and let them replay. It doesn't make sense at all. So here's basic idea of the constraint in parallel replay. Um, one is for each database page, replay must be done in LSM order. Okay. So uh, it it looks very it looks very simple because uh, because we because we can read what we record in LSM LSM order, so we can assign each uh, different uh, we can decide, uh, say assign this Oracle to different workers, but we but we can also um, assign such assign the Oracle for the same page to the same worker, so that we can we uh, we can fo uh, we can uh, say uh, so so we can follow this if uh, this condition, and yeah. So second one, replaying wall for different pages can be done in different workers. This is in parallel. And if wall is not associated with database page, we have many of such uh, cases. For example, commit, about, um, prepare, and uh, commit, prepared, all these things, and also update in the timeline. They can be replayed in LSM order by uh, by dedicated thread or by dedicated uh, dedicated worker, but that uh, because they are not associated in writing to the data file, so I assume that the overhead by by this kind of a serious thing uh, is not uh, so serious. And uh, fourth, ah uh, yeah. And for some war record, uh, well, other than commit war uh, about, uh, we have another type of the war record, such as a timeline change. And in that case, all the preceding war records must have been replayed before replaying this war record. And if a war record is associated with multiple pages, they will they will be but they, uh, not will, it's not correct, sorry. They have to be replayed by one of the workers. Okay. They cannot replay it by all the workers for each page. Because, because, because replay, replay function is built to, uh, to update multiple pages for, for this kind of wall. And to maintain the first, cons uh, this constraint and also uh, second word this constraint we need some different synchronization uh, uh, synchronization means yeah and six is as I as I uh, as I mentioned before replaying commit about prepare it must be confirmed that all the all record for this transition must have been replayed and this is a this is a typical case so uh, um, um, I reviewed all the wall record and all the wall info, uh, all the uh, wall information, and divided this into these needs for the synchronization. And so, in implementation, um, we have uh, we have I have five different kind of workers. First of all, it is a reader worker. It it reads. Wall record and passes to the to the distributor worker. Uh, so this is in fact uh, the uh, startup process. And second one is distributor worker. This takes uh, the wall record read, read, uh, from the reader worker and then 
um, say analyze some of the some, uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the red information to decide uh, to say to decide the which worker to assign and also to assign if there are any uh, say any more synchronization is used uh, is required for example uh, uh, in a in a global case for example in the timeline change or something like that and then add each wall record to the queue of each worker as each other worker in NSN order so I I make I made distributed worker as a separate worker but it can be say, merged into the leader worker so this is uh, this is not must, but uh, this is a current implementation. And the third one is transaction worker. This is a dedicated uh, worker and replace all the world record without uh, page or block information. Third one is, uh, first one is the main part of the parallelism. This is a block worker. So we can have more than one, uh, we can configure more than one block worker uh, maybe three, uh, three, four, five, or more. So this is replace assigned wall record and uh, for a given uh, page. Yeah, and also uh, handling of multi-page wall as well. I will uh, mention how we can do that uh, later. And the fourth one, it is kind of <laughs> uh, not a must, but uh, uh, this is this handles say invalid page information during the during the replay. What this handle is, um, when we replay the wall uh, for the specific page, it may be missing in the target data file because it may have been removed by other DDL or other delete after. Uh, this wall was say uh, uh, was created, so uh, so we so uh, current um, replay current uh, current recovery has this kind of a invalid page um, say recording and also afterwards uh, this uh, invalid page is usually uh, say resolved, but uh, unfortunately at present. This function is implemented using the using the hash, hash table based on the heap, the uh, PLOC. So uh, I, I found that it is not simple to make to rewrite this into uh, into uh, well, merge into the shared memory or something like that to be used from various worker various workers. So I implemented this as a separate uh, worker, and so. And so this worker gathers all these invalid page information uh, from other workers and say if it is resolved or not uh, later. So this may be also so, yeah, re-implemented or improved. But anyway, so, uh, so when the recovery is running, you will see these different um, uh, say different workers as a different bucket, but please note that this is not the usual bucket. So you see that this is all the child process of startup process. So it is not a usual bucket. And also, at here we have three block workers that we can uh, configure more or less. So to share the data, uh, all data, and also it's, uh, it's parsed or analyzed the data, um, I'm using uh, dynamic shared memory. It is a part of the uh, Postgres core, and also it is very generally available in, uh, in very widely, uh, very wide say, uh, environments such like uh, startup process. Yeah. And so what we have in this uh, shared memory, first of all, we have wall, of course, wall and its parsed result. 
it is a part, part of the uh, Excel read. And also status of running transaction. Uh, because, uh, because we need to know what LSN is assigned, what, L what is the latest LSN assigned to each worker, each block workers. And when we, apply, we are going to apply uh, commit of old prepared uh, our record, we need to see here. And then if some workers are still behind that, uh, we need to wait until the latest LSM has to be was uh, replayed by such workers before, say, replaying a commit uh, commit about prepare record. So this is unit and the third of is a status of each worker. So what kind of a queue, what kind of say wall it is assigned, and uh, also what wall is now praying and uh, uh, yeah all these things and also the queue to assign wall to workers and uh, this is also separate history of outstanding wall waiting to repray because uh, we need it to advance what LSM has been replied really replayed because uh, because in the history of wall, wall because of the polarizing. So, so uh, when uh, okay, I will I will show you in the later slide. And finally, um, I'm using uh, spin lock uh, for the protection of the data and also the uh, and also uh, some of the synchronization. And so. It is very, we have to be very careful about using this spin lock uh, because we should not involve, involve any IO between spin lock, acquiring spin lock and uh, release it. Because it, because it is consumes some of the CPU power. And also we assume that only one spin lock should be acquired by a worker. Uh, we, we can, we can, Say we uh, uh, theoretically we can acquire more than one spin locks uh, by a by a single worker, but uh, it may cause serious deadlock inside deadlock. So uh, to avoid deadlock, um, I was careful to do this one. Do this one. And for the wall buffer, uh, it is allocated in the cyclic manner. I see. I see that. Wall buffer is allocated in uh, to uh, to avoid the fragmentation, and uh, the idea is okay. Wall is eventually wall is assigned to uh, the part of the wall buffer, and then it is replayed and freed. So, if we allocate wall buffer in cyclic manner, we don't have to worry about memory fragmentation or something like that. So the next slide will show you how the picture. So we have this main free area. At the beginning, nothing there. Then we begin with um, this point to assign the wall, uh, red wall. Yeah, and then yeah, this is here. And then next, uh, the wall information is allocated after this one. So. And eventually, the first one is replayed, and this is freed. So it became becomes this way. So allocated area grows here, and then and then afterwards, this is say divided here, and then allocation is back to here. And it is also eventually freed. So we have the located um, area here. So in this picture, um, we don't have to worry about the fragmentation in, uh, uh, in the buffer. Okay. And, uh, w but when we have, say, plenty of the workers, and if, uh, when the main, this free area is filled up, what we can do, uh, what we can do is, okay, simply wait until 
such a word or such a vowel record is replayed and free. Then we can continue. And I'm using this, I, I'm using a spin lock as well as the, uh, as well as a, a Unix domain uh, socket to, uh, for the synchronization of this kind of, uh, say, requesting the sound, waiting for, the, for others to free sound and then get it. And also, transition status is stored in, uh, in different portion of the uh, shared memory. And it holds LSN uh, for, the uh, for each worker. It is an assigned for the yeah, for each broke worker. So when a worker replays this LSN, it is clear uh, it is clear it is updated. Yeah. And uh, when say uh, when for example commit record is going to be replayed, it uh, it uh, say um, it checks if um, these say this LSN has to be, has, uh, was replayed by, by other workers. So we have also, we have uh, say uh, LSN information for each workers, uh, what LSN has, was replayed. So we uh, com uh, compare this and if there are any say outstanding walls in such uh, in, in several of the workers, we just wait and and uh, and that uh, each worker t tells the transaction worker that okay i finished this one so worker status uh, has this information okay and another thing is world history this is also different from the from the seri uh, from the serialized replay because you know this is a whole um, whole while stream, and we have replayed all these, and some are replayed here, but the some left not replayed. So we can simply advance the uh, say a replay point here. Instead, we have to keep the replay a recovered point here. The the beginning of the outstanding or not replayed. Well, and then when they are deployed, we can advance the recovery point here. So this is also the different uh, point. And also synchronization is needed, dedicated, the, so um, there are several uh, means to for the synchronization. One is the dedicated data requiring asking for a sync message. So when each worker uh, gets this queue, each worker uh, send a reply to, uh, to such workers, originating workers. And this send sync message is sent via the uh, Unix domain UDP socket. And each worker has its own socket to receive the sync. And for multiple page, we need another mechanism. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, in the case of multiple page, uh, we assign such wall record to each of uh, the, each of the, uh, the block workers for each um, pages. So uh, it means that uh, multiple workers are assigned the same wall, but it has the counter, how many, say how many workers are assigned for that, and also another counter. So how many workers has reached to this wall? So, uh, so when a block worker receives this wall, it checks if I'm the last one or if any other are taking care of the uh, older walls. And if it is the last, then all the other workers are waiting for me to replay it. 
Okay, so uh, uh, this is done in, in, in this manner. So uh, this guarantees that while replay to each page is still in the order of end LSL. And so this is, uh, this is a, uh, let's say, this is snip from uh, this kind of a uh, uh, wall, uh, wall handling, okay, from, uh, from the new code. So we have n remaining, it's uh, say, how many workers are still, uh, how many workers have received this wall? Okay, and all, uh, uh, all uh, I don't know, how many, work, how many workers are waiting? And also, um, uh, that's okay, yeah. So if it is, say, oh, and remaining. Oh, sorry, it's, yeah, yeah. If this is larger than zero, so it means that I'm not the last one. So some workers has to take care of that after he uh, after that worker reaches to this wall record, and then so so this is just uh, this just update its own transaction status of each workers and then receives thing from other worker. Okay. Then, if it is zero, it means that I'm the rust. So we can redo that, redo this record, and then, so some other workers are waiting for me. So this is so this is a, so so it it sees a list of the workers, assigned workers, and then if it is not myself, it sends a sync, uh, sync message to here. Yes, it is. A, it is a bit curious, but uh, yeah. But multi-page workers are handled in this manner. So the current state of the work and the achievement. Um, code is almost done. So main uh, main infra infrastructure looks to work fine, but uh, still, uh, I have many debug code for the test, and also, uh, at present, it runs under GDB control. Uh, because we have, because we have some, some uh, we have much more things for the improvement, uh, for to improve, uh, yeah. But the parallelism itself looks working without any issue. A good thing is, existing redo functions are running without any modification. I'm testing this uh, using the, using a PG bench, so, uh, uh, so the we need to test more, much more uh, area of the uh, uh, much more area of uh, let's say uh, of the resource managers, but the, but the most of the parallelism is uh, runs on the on the heap and the each index, and all the others are replayed in a ser serialized manner. So I hope that everything should be okay. Here's a list of affected major source files. So, uh, because because this worker is not the usual backend, so and so I needed to change the uh, uh, I need to change many things besides the many uh, besides many parallel reply things. But uh, most of the parallel reply things is uh, in the parallel reply .c. And also additional parallel replay dot h has uh, several definitions of that. But other than that, um, I needed to um, I need to uh, change or to to modify the xlog dot c or xlog reader and xlog utils uh, to read and analyze wall into the shared buffer, not to the not to the heap, just a usual heap. Okay, and also I need to. Uh, change some of the postmaster startup proc dot c something like that uh, to fork worker processes as a child process of the startup process. And uh, of course uh, the DUC parameters addition and also the uh, 
uh, long under status uh, for the uh, for the workers. So uh, it's many. Uh, we need. I need many changes to such uh, such a, yeah. And we have several additional GAC parameters. Uh, most of the all, most of all, it's a parallel replay. Uh, it's a bool, and its default is off, so nothing changes. So with this addition, um, if uh, we are doing, say, serialized uh, replay, there are no, there are no difference. So, 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 so after the, after the build, you can uh, you you can run make check, and it will it will run the recovery in uh, in a serialized manner. But anyway, so we can survey also the number of P replay, uh, replay workers and the number of the queues and also the max transaction. Yeah, it is taken from the max connections, but, uh, in, the but in the case of uh, the replication standby, maybe we need to specify this value as a value of the max connections of the primary. And also the PD pray buffer. It is calculated, and uh, uh, with three block workers, I think three megabytes or something like that is more than sufficient. So I don't think it is. Uh, it it consumes much of the much of the memory resources. Yeah, the remaining work. Yeah, um, there are still many things. Uh, well, I have so many test code or debug code in the co uh, in a, uh, and so I need to clean up them, and also clean up structures. Still, uh, I have several of the structures just for the test. And uh, validation of consistent recovery point. It is something uh, I need. I need. I need some improvement of this in a uh, in a parallel manner. And also determination of the end of wall rate. If, I hope this is not a major one, but somehow after the after the wall read point has reached, it tries to read uh, wall and it reports uh, invalid walls. And also port to version 16 or later. At present, it works with uh, version 14. And version 15, we had se we had several changes in the structure in the xlog.c. So, uh, so porting, uh, porting is not straightforward. I just find my time to do this. But I found that uh, there are no fundamental change in the, in the, uh, in the recovery code itself. So uh, uh, this will not be uh, serious. And then uh, run with a GDB and measure the performance gain. This is the main part. Yeah. So I need to test this with the uh, archive recovery and the long shipping replications to measure the gain. Um, so to do this, so I need uh, some more resources, some, some more people to work with the uh, source code level, not just the testing to work together. Uh, it is very, very helpful. I, yeah, so if any of you are interested in, please come to me. And there are several issues of the discussion, uh, issues uh, to discuss. Um, well, synchronization, now we are, I'm using Unix domain socket directory, so um, maybe we need some wrapper for portability. And the curing, um, to queue the wall to each workers, now I'm using a POS6MQ directory. And because, because it is very fast, and simple, and it is supporting about, uh, say, multi workers to sing to one curing. It is different from the from the MQ, uh, or pre pre prepared in the as a part of the Postgres. But uh, I'm afraid it is not portable to other environments such as Windows or something like that. And also, uh, the MQ is. Um, how to say uh, MQ is not flexible enough because we need to we need say to configure the kernel operating system for more number of the Q, uh, uh, MQ and also uh, more 
number of the queues for the each queue, uh, 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 number of the queues we, we can put to the MQ. It is currently fixed to 10. Yeah. And the most serious part is bringing it to how, how we can bring it to the PG core. Uh, because code is not small. Uh, with debug code, uh, the around the patch is about 7,000 lines. It's huge. Yeah. So uh, if I remove all such a debug code, maybe pure co number of code will be around 4,000 or so. So um, I need expert help to divide this into manageable smaller pieces for commit fest to, to and also discuss in the hackers mailing list. I, did, I didn't bring this to the hackers mailing list because if I just bring this to the hackers mailing list, there will be enormous, uh, well, enormous amount of the discussions or uh, say discussions, comments, ideas. And uh, <laughs> it is, uh, I was afraid it was more than I can handle by myself. So, so, uh, so, I, uh, so I, I need, so I need uh, more people to work with. Yeah. So finally, uh, this is a resources. Um, it is all opened. Uh, we have. Uh, I opened the source repository. It is uh, branches parallel reply fourteen six, and also uh, the tools uh, to help the uh, current uh, test is here. And the main idea is in this Postgres week. And all this uh, say slide information is slide is available through the uh, through this uh, schedule. Uh, schedule has a link to the PDF of this uh, of this material. So I hope that many uh, um, many of you you are interested in this and work together. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So any questions? I think, yeah, yes. So I have a question about, uh, did you add an abstraction to this one? Uh, not yet, yeah. Uh, because, 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 yeah, it, because it is still in the, still in the debug case, so I, I, so I need to remove all the debug cases and fix the remaining things before I, before I really measure the performance gain. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yes. Right. Um, so, what did you when you expand on top of the prefetching you already had? Okay, I, I'm ex ex uh, expecting gains from uh, from say replaying uh, each page replay in parallel. Uh, because because uh, because uh, in the case of the, in the case of the, say a recovery. Um, replay, uh, replay, uh, uh, say, uh, in internally, replay routine will have to read, uh, read the data pages from the data file. Okay. So if it is done in series, series, all read has to be done in series. But with this, with this picture, such read can be done in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So there are there are two things. One, one is one is update to up, uh, one is uh, update to data pages. The other the other is the other is prefetching wall records. So both. Yes. Yeah, I understand that. And it can only be said, essentially, because I was planning on the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. Uh, so I think it should fit together very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I understand that, yeah, 15 has this improvement, so, uh, so, I, so I believe that I can say, I can bring this distributor to the main thread, main thread. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think, I'll change the 15 to have a, when you create a thread, you have to have a thread that has the same size as the main thread. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But I, I just wanted to ask a couple of technical questions mm. about the main thread. Mm. Why do you need to use um, uh, Unix domains, new Unix domains buffers? Wouldn't it be more natural to use shared memory and latch implementation variables and stuff like that? Uh, can we use latch in uh, in the environment of the uh, in, in the environment of uh, this uh, say startup process? Yes. And also uh, also the performance I'm worrying about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's one question. And but uh, please understand that this is this is not uh, this is not this implementation has uh, has no concrete background to use uh, yeah. to use a yeah. So this this is just this is just to say it was it was easier for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But as a third, the third and last question, why do you need to fork the child processes instead of using the normal infrastructure where everything is inherent to the postmaster? No, postmaster, uh, because because postmaster, uh, because it has, uh, because it, it needs to use resources from the startup process. Can be, can be, yeah. But uh, but uh, I'm afraid that uh, it means it means that uh, the starter, uh, say, postmaster has to uh, has to create these workers. But uh, for the postmaster to create its child process, uh, say, uh, from this uh, from this code, I learned that uh, the recovery has to reach to some consistent point. But it has to run a start even before. Even before the, the recovery starts, so yeah. So uh, so I'm I'm not uh, I'm not saying that. Uh, well, but uh, uh, we have to be very sure about if the postmaster can can do that, and uh, also uh, if there are any say uh, any more bad things about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi. Yes. Uh, um, for the standby to work, yeah, we uh, this is uh, the one condition is uh, to before applying the the order of applying the uh, commit record about record. So, okay, it's not just a record. You kind of let's apply the same, some updates at different times, some records go there and then some some other issues. It does, yeah, but uh, but it does not it does not say it does not affect any visibility to such a record because yeah. because yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's think about that. It, I, I believe that it. Yeah, I believe that it is related to the visibility check of each page or of each tuples, each tuple. So uh, let me think about that. But uh, it's 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 good point. It's very good point. I think. Yeah. Please let, please let me think about that. And uh, so can I have you 
can I have, can I have, hello? So, yeah, uh, uh, could, you, could you let me know how, how, how to contact to you? Because I, let me think about that. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, so uh, I'll be around, and so please come to me. Yeah. Okay, thank you.